Hey, what's up guys? It's Chris from C10CJ. Just wanted to give you a little overview of uh, some, these connectors that I'll be showing you guys here in a second. Uh, I'll be showing you some Metropack, but let's just talk about the connectors in general. If you're going to go to EFI, you're going to see a lot of these things. Or if you're going to try and retrofit your harness on your vehicle and use some weather tight connectors, uh, this is stuff you're going to run into. So what I've got is I've got a Deutsch style connector right here just to show you an example. Uh, you, you basically have two, two pieces of it. You've got a male, let me flip this around, and a female as you might be used to it, but in technical terms this is a plug and this is a receptacle or sometimes this guy is also called a socket. So they just plug together like that. Uh, inside of these you've got pins and sockets and they're opposite of what you'd expect so the pins actually go in the receptacle or the female side so the male goes in the female and then the sockets or the female pins go in the male side so yeah think of it how you want but so that's how they work um, these are crimp style these will use, I'll show you guys the crimper here in a little bit. Uh, you just break these off and you crimp these in. The Deutsch, they have, uh, you crimp the wire in here and then you crimp the insulation here. These don't have a, a cable seal like the Metropack and the Weatherpack do. Uh, but because the Deutsch actually has a seal on the back of the plug or the receptacle. So this is the seal for the wire. So let's get into it. Okay, so here we're looking at a Metropack connector, and this is a 150 series. 150 just refers to the width of the pins. These are actually flat pins. You might also hear like uh, 630s or 280s or something like that. So this is the receptacle. This is the TPA. This is the pin itself, and then these are the seals that go on each of the wires. Uh, so, it, like mentioned before, these are flat pins versus round pins, and the width of these really just kind of specifies the current carrying capacity with the 150s being the least. Here are the tools that I typically use to assemble these connectors. Uh, just a small set, mainly three on the left here. Starting on the left, we've got a set of wire cutters. Uh, these aren't your typical side cutters. They're large gauge cutters. You can see the opening there is a little different than what you're used to. Uh, you can get these at Home Depot. Just, these are Klein brand cutters. Uh, really good cutter, especially for cutting bundles of wire. Nice, clean cut. Next up, we've got the crimpers themselves. Uh, these are the low budget crimpers you can get from like Summit. The holes there indicate these are for weather pack or metro pack. And then we've got the strippers and then we've got the cutters or side cutters. So let's go back over to these crimpers and take a little closer look at these things. Um, so the Metropack Weatherpack crimper, you can see it's got three dies right in the middle of it here um, that are used for crimping the wire itself into the terminal. And then the two circular holes are used for crimping the cable seals. So you basically got two different sizes there. These work great for the 150 and the 280 series. Uh, if you get into 630, you're going to need a different crimper. All right, let's get into the assembly. We're going to start by breaking off the pins from the strip. Just use the tip of the crimpers to do this. Uh, works pretty well. Next, we're going to put the seals on. I put the seals on before I strip the wire. Just makes the seals go on a lot easier. And then we get to stripping the wire. Yeah, you don't need to strip a whole lot off of it. Uh, probably a little less than a quarter of an inch. You just gotta take a look at the, the pins and the sockets and see what you need. Uh, and then one thing I don't do is I do not twist the wire. Just leave it as strands. And then here we're gonna put the first pin on. Uh, we slide the seal up to the end of the wire and then we make sure that the wire is in the body of the terminal. We crimp that down and then we crimp the seal. So the cheap crimpers here, uh, this is a two-step operation. The expensive crimpers would crimp the, the body and the seal all in one shot, but because we're only spending about 25, 30 bucks on crimpers, we gotta do two operations for each one of those. And of course, you can do all this ahead of time. You don't need to worry about the pin out of the connector or anything at this point, because it's all the same step. Alright, 
So I've got all seven of these done. I'm not putting these wires in here. Uh, next yet, there's my spreadsheet showing the layout of the, the connector. This is where it does matter. Uh, that was, I went A, B, C, D. Uh, so it's just a matter of getting everything lined up and then you just plug and chug. And then same thing on the other side, lettering. Last up here, we've got the TPA. Just slide that in between and then line all the wires up and clip it on. All right, so let's take a look what this looks like in the truck. Uh, here's the bundle that we just assembled. Uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna find the, the plug that I've already put in here. So let's take a look at that. There's the plug right there. Uh, this is just a fraction of all the I.O. that goes between the ECU and the rest of the vehicle. Uh, in this case, this is half of the inputs going from the vehicle to the ECU. So there it is, got seven connections all ready to be tied into the vehicle harness. And then got a couple of more connectors along with yet another one way over here. So this one actually here is just uh, some sensors I had on the engine. Uh, the rest of these are the I.O. for the ECU. 